Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video, what I'm gonna be doing is sharing with you my top five picks for the best programming language to learn in 2020. Now before we get into those picks, I wanna quickly discuss the criteria that I've used to decide these and to rank these different languages. Now the first thing that I always consider when I look at a programming language is how mainstream or well known this language is. How well established is it? Is it stable? Has it been around for a long time? Now obviously more newer languages or languages that have just come out can't really win on this front, but I think it's something that's important to consider to make sure that you're gonna learn a language that is going to be around for a long time. The next thing that I like to look at is popularity. So not just in terms of how many people are using the language, but is it being learned more and more day by day? Are more people looking it up? Are less people looking at the language? It's something to consider and languages that are growing in popularity are obviously going to be favorable for us to want to learn for the future. The next thing is going to be the tools, frameworks, and libraries that come with this language or that have been built off of this language. That's very important. That's some of the reasons why some of the languages that are on our list are there is because of the amazing frameworks that come with them and what it allows you to do with the language itself. Next, we're going to get into a little bit about the job market. So, you know, how many jobs are there for this specific position and what is the average salary look like for ones that we can actually find the statistics for. And then finally, what is learning this language actually going to do for you? So not just for a company that wants to hire you or for getting paid, what is this going to do for your professional and skill development? And is this going to help you possibly learn another language in the future and become a better programmer. I think that's something a lot of people skim over and that's a point that I'm gonna to try to make a lot through this video is what this language will actually do for you as a programmer and allow you to move on towards, um, you know, in your future career or future programming experience. So with that being said, let's get into my top five picks for the best programming language to learn in 2020. Before we get started, I need to thank Simply Learn for sponsoring this video and introducing all of us to the full stack web developer course called the Mean Stack Masters Program. In this course, you'll master backend and front end JavaScript technologies using MongoDB, Express, Angular, and Node.js. You'll learn tools and skills like Node Packet Manager, SQLite 3, TypeScript, Bootstrap, and many others. You'll gain in-depth knowledge of NoSQL principles like data modeling and ingestion and work on seven real-life industry-based projects. You'll build dynamic and interactive web pages using HTML and CSS and be able to pick between electives like React.js and Docker Compose. Start mastering web development today by hitting the link in the description and signing up for the Mean Stack Masters program. So coming in at pick number five, I have C and C++. Now I've grouped these languages together because I believe they're similar enough that we can talk about them in the same category for this video. And when we're talking about languages being well-established and mainstream, I would say there's no better example than that than C and C++. Now C and C++ are some of the most um, well-established languages that exist. They're used by millions of different developers across millions of different organizations around the world. And they've been around for such a long time that there's an amazing community behind these languages and tons of different resources online to be able to learn them. Now, when it comes to the popularity of this language or these languages, I would say it's been decreasing as the years go on. But the reason for that would likely be that new beginners picking up new programming languages in the past few years wouldn't really be introduced to C or C++ as their first language, and therefore there's less people learning it. That doesn't mean that there's less jobs and that it's less in demand. In fact, looking at the job market for C and C++, we can see that it's stayed fairly stable over the past few years. And although there's not a massive surge and boom in these kind of jobs with developing in C and C++, um, they're not, they don't look to be going anywhere just because so many organizations use this as their core code um, for a lot of their systems. And that again is because C and C++ is super fast, it's super capable, there's nothing that you can't really do if you know C or C++. And this brings me into my last point which is learning C and C++ is only going to make you a better programmer. Even if you're not looking to do this as your career or your job, I would definitely recommend looking into it or at least you know, getting a general idea of what it's like to program in C and C++ because it's much different than a lot of these higher languages that we see today and learning to use something like this just makes you a much better programmer. Finally, the salary, the average salary of a C++ developer in the United States here is listed at 106,000 US dollars. I'm gonna be using Indeed for all of these salary um, kind of insights or averages. These are gonna change and vary depending on where you're located, um, your age, your amount of experience and all of that, but this is what the average I'm getting is from Indeed. So anyways, that's my pick number five, C and C++. 
So coming in at pick number four, I have Java. Now Java is also a very well established programming language. It's been around for a very long time. It's trusted, it's reliable, and it's used for very large complex systems, which we can't say about a lot of the other languages that I'll be mentioning later on. Now Java is a great language. A lot of people seem to think that it's been dying down in popularity. Um, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. I think it's been staying fairly level, if not increasing a slight amount. The reason a lot of people seem to think that Java is dying is because a lot of these other newer programming languages are kind of surpassing it in the ranks. But that doesn't mean that Java is not still used by millions of different organizations around the world and has one of the largest code bases on GitHub. So I believe it's actually ranked the third third or the fourth uh, most contributed code on GitHub, something around the lines that someone can correct me if I'm wrong on that. And there's a ton of open source APIs and libraries for Java. So this essentially means that you can do pretty much anything with Java code as well. I wouldn't say it's as capable and flexible as something like C or C++, but when it comes to building out large scale systems, Java is a great option for that, and it's not as complex and difficult to learn as a language like C or C++. It also runs on the JVM, which means that you can scale this to pretty much any device or platform you want. You can run this on a server, you can run this on iOS, you can put this on you know, pretty much anything you want, right? You can make desktop applications. And when it comes to the job market, there's so many jobs in Java development because this is what so many companies have been trusting and using since they've been founded or since they even existed as their core technology. So knowing Java, you'll most likely be able to get a job. And I believe the average salary of a Java developer is 90,000. Now, one of the reasons I like telling people to learn Java is if they're coming from a background, say like Python or a scripting language or something that's not statically typed. Moving to a statically typed language and learning Java, it's not that difficult. A lot of the syntax is similar to something you've seen before, but it really shows you how important structure in your code can be and allows you to get a really good kind of fundamentals and understanding of object oriented design. So I think it's a great language to learn in 2020, especially if you're someone who's only been doing scripting languages beforehand. So the next language on my list coming in at rank number three is Go, otherwise known as Golang. Now for those of you that don't know much about Go, Go is a statically typed compiled language that's built on a functional programming paradigm. Now what that means is there's actually no object oriented programming or style even built into the language Go. You can kind of try to simulate it, but instead of using objects and classes, it actually uses something called structs. Now Go is actually built around um, concurrent programming, so making concurrency really easy to implement into the program. And I almost like to compare it to almost a high performance version of Python. So the language itself is actually very simple. It's um, pretty small in comparison, like if we're looking at the amount of keywords and just the amount of features built into the language itself, but it's very, very powerful and building high performance, almost scripts very quickly is something that Go is really good at. So that's the way I like to, the way you can kind of think about Go is a high performance version of Python. It does a lot of similar things that Python would be able to do, like it does some web development stuff, some enterprise applications. You can pretty much do anything you want with Go as well. And since it's compiled, that means it's pretty easy to transfer your Go applications to different computers. Now, in terms of being well established, I would say Go is probably a little bit away from getting to that point. There's not a huge community around it, at least from what I've seen on the internet myself doing some research. And I think in the next few years, we're gonna see grow, um, Go continue to rise in popularity and become one of the mainstream languages. Now, right now, in terms of popularity, Go has been kind of booming and just skyrocketing over the past few years. More people have been learning about it, figuring out what it does, and you know, falling in love with Go, the language itself. So that's why I've ranked it at number three here. I could see in the next maybe five, 10 years, actually probably a little bit shorter than that, Go becoming one of the next mainstream languages. I think it's really powerful, it's really interesting, and learning it is gonna show you a different style of programming that you've probably never been introduced to before. In terms of average salary and jobs, those figures are hard to determine just because this language is so new. So I'm gonna stick from not telling you anything about them as I don't wanna mislead anyone, but I would definitely recommend at least looking into Go and considering learning it as your next language in 2020. 
And coming in at number two, we have JavaScript. Now I'm sure this is no surprise to any of you, but JavaScript back in the day, I would say maybe you know seven, eight years ago, was really not nearly as big as it was today. It was something that was just used for kind of front end web development work. A lot of developers almost ridiculed JavaScript and were like, you know, it's a horrible language. Personally, when I started learning JavaScript when I was about that age, you know, eight years ago, I didn't find it that useful. But now with all of these new frameworks being invented for it, something like you know React, Vue, Angular, Node.js, it's turned JavaScript from something that was just a great front-end web development language into a great multi-purpose programming language. And now, learning JavaScript, not only can you do front-end web development, but you can also do back-end work, you can do full stack, you can do stuff with um, you know client-server architectures, you can go crazy with what you're going to do with JavaScript because of all the things that have been invented recently for it. Now, GitHub has actually ranked JavaScript as the number one one uh, most contributed code for the past five years. The average salary of a JavaScript developer in the US is actually 114,000 US dollars, and there is a ton and increasing amount of jobs for JavaScript. And it just seems like overall a great language to learn in 2020. It's pretty simple. It, you can learn it, you know, honestly, I would say in a week or two, especially if you're an experienced developer. And becoming kind of a master at JavaScript now just means you can do so much more with your career and with the language in general. And that's why I've put this language at number two. I don't think I need to say much more about it. You guys know how awesome JavaScript is now in 2020. And I think for anyone that wants to get especially into the web development game or get a quick entry into programming, that learning JavaScript is probably be one of your best bets. So my number one pick for the best programming language to learn in 2020 is going to have to go to Python. Now I do have a slight bias here as my entire channel is pretty much based on Python and that's what I, you know, my kind of bread and butter is. But despite that, Python was actually ranked the fastest growing programming language according to GitHub last year. It also is the second most popular programming language based on code contributions on GitHub. And it's just in a really amazing language and tool to have under your belt as a developer. It's it's great at doing so many different things from so many different domains. No, it might not be the best tool for every single project that you're going to be working on, but chances are if you know Python and you need to do something, you will be able to do that in Python. There's a pretty well infinite amount of libraries and modules for Python code, which allow you to do things like make games, make websites, um, desktop applications, iOS applications, Android apps, you name it, you can likely do it with Python. And it's a really great language to get into and to learn, especially if you're a beginner. It's something that's so simple and just very easy to use, but yet extremely powerful. And that's one of the reasons that I recommend it as my top choice and my top programming language to learn in 2020. Now, other than that, the average salary of a Python developer in the US, and this is the highest on the list so far, is 120,000 US dollars annually. And the amount of jobs for Python related work has been increasing steadily um, over the past few years. And this year alone, I think there was an increase of something like 15,000 jobs in the United States, which is actually a substantial amount. So Python is a great language. Again, it's a general purpose programming language. There's nothing you really can't do with it. And in terms of building a strong foundation, learning Python is really going to help you do that and it's going to give you almost an appreciation for the simplicity built into the language versus some other languages that are more complex again like C++. So with that being said that has been my top five picks for the best programming languages to learn in 2020. Do you agree with me? Do you horribly disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's have a little debate about it. And with that being said I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did leave a like, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in another one.